I saw an interview with Billy Gates, and I want to get to that. Decades, an American company broke ground on a next generation nuclear power plant in the U.S. The company behind the new technology is TerraPower, and it's backed by billionaire Bill Gates. Nuclear power is carbon free, which means it doesn't emit the greenhouse gases scientists link to climate change. And Gates is building a plant in Wyoming at a cost he estimates will be $10 billion. TerraPower's new reactor uses liquid sodium rather than water for cooling, which the company says makes nuclear power cheaper, safer, and more efficient. We spoke with Gates Thursday just after he'd broken ground. How many more of these do you have planned? Um, what does well, that we, depend on? We have discussions with utilities uh, about building tens of these, uh, but you know, we really only have huge impact and success if we get uh, past 100. What's so the, Wyoming has to open before you do these? or uh, We can start four or five in parallel. The final, final approval uh, from the regulatory commission is out there in 2030. Uh, and so that then gives you the green light to turn the others on. But you can start the construction. The demand for electricity in the United States for the first time in a long time is going to go up quite a bit. It's mm -hmm. electric cars, buses. Uh, some people use electric heat pumps in their homes. Uh, and just in the last year, with these artificial intelligence breakthroughs, all the big AI companies are saying, OK, we need to build uh, lots of data centers. And so uh, if we don't have a nuclear to complement the wind and sun, uh, the country will fall behind the demand for electricity. President Biden has said, even he, with all of this money being invested in green energy, that the United States still will need fossil fuels for some time. I mean, that, that's the reality of what you're sketching out here. It's not either or. Right. Well, the growth will be in uh, the clean sources, sun, wind, uh, and nuclear. Uh, but we won't get there to be 100 percent green, you know, uh, you know, the goal is to get rid of all emissions by 2050. Uh, even that's pretty ambitious. All of the clean sources will have to do a great job of getting their costs down. When the public hears about nuclear energy, though, they think of some of the worst cases that and mistakes. Three Mile Island, Pennsylvania, Chernobyl in the former Soviet Union. They think of Japan even just after Fukushima in 2011. And after that, Japan's government reacted pretty strongly. They shut down many of their plants. They're starting to put them back online. But there was a very sharp reaction then. So how do you respond to people who say, well, I don't really want this in my backyard? Well, nuclear. Um... The NIMBYs, the dreaded NIMBYs. Dun, dun, dun. Haters of millennials and Zs. Haters of people who want to f f form families. Haters of new electricity. You know, they, this after heat problem that when you shut a reactor down, it still has heat. That's why Chernobyl was a problem and, and Fukushima. Um, our design, that it goes away because since we use this sodium to cool everything, it can absorb all that heat. This is the natrium. Right. And so those accidents were both first and generation, second generation reactors. The third generation reactors dealt with that with a lot of complexity. So those reactors are quite safe, but the cost overruns meant that the electricity will be very, very expensive. We solved the, the safety problem with a much simpler approach, but we had to start from scratch. For people at home to understand. Okay, ask ChatGPT, uh, deaths in nuclear power compared to other sources. Nuclear power is considered one of the safest forms of energy when assessed by numbers of deaths per terawatt hour of energy produced. Here's a comparison. Coal is one of the most dangerous forms of energy causing the highest numbers of deaths per terawatt hour. Um, this includes direct accidents in mining and pollution related to health issues. For example, in some estimates, coal causes about 25 deaths per terawatt hour. Oil is about 18 deaths. Natural gas, 3. Hydro, 1.4. Wind, 0.15. Solar, deaths are primarily due to falls during installations. Oh, that stinks. Nuclear is fewer than 0 0.1 deaths per terawatt hour, so it's on, on par with uh, solar. Uh, Timothy says, at very least, more nuclear power means less disgusting coal being burned to run those crypto mining bots. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Finally, let's let's have clean doge powered by nuclear power. Also, let's get you in Discord, Timothy. You've been here for a while. You contribute really good stuff. Okay, let's go back. Understand. Your reactor and most um, advanced reactors require this new high assay, low enriched uranium. So, that supply is really very much owned by Russia. How does America get that fuel without putting money in the pocket of Vladimir Putin? Yeah, so the uh, U.S. Congress recently passed a bill that we supported uh, that says none of the fuel uh, will come out of Russia, and so the U.S. won't be a customer of that any longer. 
But uh, that's not immediate, right? Uh, that's right. But the, the money in the bill will get the supply base going in the United States. Uh, we also have a supplier in the UK. We've got a supplier in South Take a look at that bill real quick. Well, we'll get a summary. The Senate just passed a critical clean energy bill to pave the way for more nuclear. The Democrats, Republicans, and bitterly divided Congress can agree on one thing. U.S. needs more nuclear power to, to power America's rapidly growing energy appetite. The Senate overwhelmingly approved a major bill Tuesday night to make it easier, cheaper, and faster to permit and build new nuclear reactors. The Advanced Act, which passed with just two senators voting no, now heads to Biden's desk for signing, which he expected to do. The bill represents one of the most significant actions Congress has taken to advance clean energy since Democrats narrowly passed the Inflation Reduction Act almost two years ago and comes as the U.S. tries to revive an aging nuclear energy industry at home and bolster cost-cutting technologies abroad. In a major victory for our climate and American energy security, the U.S. Senate has passed the Advance Act with an overwhelming bipartisan support, says Democrat Senator Tom Carper. The bill works to bring down costs of developers by streamlining the permitting process, cutting fees and speeding approval times, and spurs more development of new wave projects like small modular nuclear reactors. It also incentivizes deploying advanced American nuclear technologies overseas as the U.S. competes with Russia and China for global nuclear energy dominance. But the bill could also be a boon for big traditional nuclear reactors, which make up all of the current U.S. fleet. Georgia Power recently brought two new large reactors online. Together, the Vol the Vogtel plant units three and four represent the largest clean energy generator in the nation, according to utility. They were the only large reactors to be built in the U.S. in the last three decades. God, so much lost time. If if Three Mile and Chernobyl didn't happen, I'd imagine where we'd be right now if we continue with nuclear. High cost and delayed construction. Uh, dog the Vogel project, which came online years behind schedule and cost about $35 billion, more than double its original budget of $14 billion. The Bill Gates back terror project in Wyoming is trying something different. It recently broke ground and began construction of smaller, cheaper reactors. The advanced technology the industry believes will be the future of nuclear energy, but Terra Power is still waiting for its design to be approved by Nuclear Regulatory Commission, something the new bill could help speed up. Terra Power is expected to be built by 2030 at the earliest. While small reactors prove less energy, typically a third of traditional plant, they require less space and can therefore be built in more places. They are made of smaller parts than traditional reactors, and experts have likened the technology to flat pack furniture. The components are developed elsewhere, then shipped and assembled on site. And nuclear, which has faced past opposition for its radioactive waste and high profile reactor disasters, Fukushima and Chernobyl. Uh, so many Democrats like nuclear for its zero carbon electricity, while Republicans point to its ability to provide steady baseload power seen as reliable backstop to more intermittent wind and solar. It can also be used for heavy industry like steel making, which renewables can't power. So that's another awesome aspect of technology. It can make both sides win at the same time. It gives you more from 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 when you're dealing with zero sum game mentality of this or that, or politics is basically who gets what and how and dividing a pie, technology can say, no, I can give you a bigger pie so everyone can win. And that's why we love technology here. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. A fabric fund. So we can go to the free world and meet our fuel requirements. The, the reason we had to delay our schedule from 2028 mm -hmm. to 2030 was because of this fuel problem. And we didn't anticipate a war in Ukraine that changed that completely. And so now building up the alternate plan uh, with the federal government helping us figure that out, uh, that's now completely in place. So how long before the U.S. can rely on its own fuel for these nuclear reactors? Can America become completely energy independent if it's actually switching to nuclear? Yeah, so the, uh, the U.S. is very lucky that between uh, the U.S. and Canada, uh, there's quite a bit of uranium. Even in Wyoming, and specifically, uh, there are good uranium mines there. But you have to mine for it. And well, you, have environmental to, you have concerns to mine it, that. and you have to have the manufacturers. And that's uh, the congressional uh, $2.8 billion uh, that they just passed is to get a, a North America supply chain going. Uh, and it was great that the Congress took care of that problem because they're the ones who said, we don't want you to buy fuel from Russia. And as an environmentalist, you don't have concerns about this kind of mining within the United States. Well, all mining you know, is subject to, uh, in the case of the U.S., a lot of environmental review to mm -hmm. make sure that you know, as you're pulling stuff out, as the tailings, or where are you putting those, and how do those get used? So, you know, I feel very comfortable that the U.S. is going to make sure that uh, that there's no environmental concerns about uh, U.S. And, and Canadian mining. Are you confident that you can continue this project regardless of 
who wins a majority or the White House. Yes, I, I'm quite confident. I mean, I'm, you know, I meet with lots of Republicans. I meet with lots of Democrats. I'd say that the, their support for nuclear power is very impressive in both parties. The reasons they support nuclear power may not be identical. Uh, the Republicans may emphasize the security issues, you know, energy security, exporting these uh, power things uh, to the entire world. Uh, the Democrats value those things, but they also value that it's a clean source of energy uh, and that it's because it's not weather dependent, it can fill in in the periods where the renewables are, are not producing. Mm -hmm. And so of all the climate related work I'm doing, I'd say the one that uh, has the most bipartisan energy behind it is actually this, this nuclear work. Well, Donald Trump talks about renewable energy quite a lot on the campaign trail, but when he was president, uh, he did sign bills that encouraged nuclear Yes, yeah, so nuclear, nuclear really is special. It's its own uh, category of green energy? Not because it's green. Uh, there are people who don't value that part of it, although I wish they would. Mm -hmm. They value it because of the U.S. leadership. And you really don't want the nuclear reactors around the world made by your adversaries because uh, it's economically a huge job creator and because the materials involved in these reactors possibly could be diverted. You want your eye on, you know, making sure that it's not feeding into to some military related activity. And so the U.S. leadership in this space uh, has a lot of strategic benefits. Mr. Trump has talked about repealing the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA. He said that's one of the first things he wants to do. Yeah, I mean, it takes both houses of Congress. Uh, and, you know, I think a lot of the provisions uh, in there would be preserved. You know, a lot of projects have started. They're creating jobs. A lot of those jobs are in, you know, red states. Why? Why doesn't the administration talk more about that? Well, a lot they, of those jobs are in red states. Yeah, because those states, um, you know, move faster. They have a lighter regulatory load. Um, you know, West Virginia, Wyoming, Texas, a lot of them uh, are where the pilot plants are being built. And the more that happens, the more that you'll probably see bipartisan support. I'm not a good predictor of uh, 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 elections, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of those credits probably will survive. Uh, it's possible some of them won't. The U.S created, right, the nuclear space, really, with the Manhattan Project. Do you think we can get back as a country to really leading on the innovation on this front? Well, there is competition. You know, the country that's building the most nuclear reactors today uh, is China. Uh, and, you know, they're serious about diversifying their energy sources and, and getting rid of their greenhouse emissions. The U.S. just tends to be more innovative, whether it's artificial intelligence or new medicines. You know, if we unleash the, the innovation power of this country, we tend to lead. And I feel great about the support we're getting from the federal government in this nuclear space to take our history of excellence and solve the problem that our current reactors are just way too expensive. And so let's make the changes, uh, mm -hmm. you know, be willing to innovate, out innovate our foreign competitors uh, to maintain. You know, say what you want about Billy Gates. I, believe me, crushed a lot of companies, screwed a lot of people over. The game's the game. It's terrible. I, if he would have crushed my company, I'd have risked my life too. But what he's doing here with nuclear power is quite impressive. And the fact that he was pushing for this back in 2008 and went through, dealt with Fukushima, dealt with all the, the, the pushback, but he, they kept on pushing this thing through. And so I think it's commendable. I, I, Coldy was mentioning the zero car. So Kobe mentioned. I'm a physicist who has worked on plutonium handling, and I have also worked on plume modeling in Chernobyl. It's a mucky, expensive industry. Um, I said, fantastic. Um, well, the game on the show, but can't because of time. The zero carbon argument is also nonsense. It costs a vast amount of carbon emissions to build a reactor. And so I asked him, um, well said, that's mining. That's, that's construction plus mining, right? And he said, yeah. So, yeah, I, I look at it as just, for me, the main argument is, it's stable and consistent power that we can get out. We're not going to have any brownouts or anything. It just keeps producing morning through night. It gives you a lot of electricity. It's perfect for manufacturing. I think it's really good. Regarding the whole CO2 thing, I think it's going to require some other type of advanced science to figure out what we're going to do for that for that issue. But again, talking on my lane. Thank you all for watching today. Thank you all for your support. If you can, hit, hit that like and subscribe button. If you also join our channel, support our channel, you get access to our, our live stream library. And then if you become a supporter for five bucks a month, you get access to our four um, live stream episodes that we do uh, every Wednesday at 11 a.m. So thank you all, and I'll talk to you all later. Peace.